I'm trying to move as fast as possible because the light is going down. The shot with no ND filter at f11 0.5 seconds and ISO 100. And let's calculate quickly the exposure time. And now I really hope that the four minutes are more than enough to capture a little bit of the movement in the clouds. Hello everyone and welcome to another vlog. Today, as you can see, I'm in a rural landscape of Romania. I'm in the mountain village. In fact, it's the highest uh, village in Romania. And we have the luck of a, a little bit of snow. I'm gonna try and do some minimalist shots in this uh, case. I've used the 70 to 200 millimeter lens on my full frame body. You see the trails of time-lapse people rush the sight and sound each a spark to flash and fade out making moments out of ours in a slow stop motion corner a cut of stillness my name is Toma, photo Tom here on YouTube and I'm a full-time landscape and travel photographer so if you're interested in this kind of topics make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. A very important thing that you have to be aware of when you're photographing in winter conditions is to compensate for how the camera sees the brightness of the snow. Uh, I mentioned it before in a couple of other videos Whenever you have snow, the camera will think that the scene is really bright and will try to take the exposure of the scene down it will take it to 18 percent gray so if you want to get a really proper exposed image you need from that center uh, indicator to overexpose one stop or one and a half stops sometimes it's even two stops if you have a really bright light out of focus sharing silence over tea. The image becomes sharper as the camera closes in. Now let's take a really short break and try to uh, explain what a minimalist shot is, at least for me. So there are a lot of houses, of course, it's a village, but because it's a mountain village, the houses are scattered. Now, my idea is to try and find positions from where I can isolate uh, some houses. Not all the houses will look interesting. Whenever I see a new house, a new built house, that house probably will not get into the shot because it's not that interesting. Probably 50 years from now it will. But the idea is to have one element and then a lot of negative space. If, if we are talking about the slope and the house is over here. Uh, we can also see houses that are right on the edge or the ridge of the hill and then we can have a really uh, long leading line and just the house and of course the negative space provided by the sky above. There are lots of ways in which we can photograph uh, or we can take minimalist shots. Also there is a very good opportunity to break the rule of thirds and to have the subject in the center of the shot. Another very important thing is to pay attention to how the potential subjects are positioned. In this case there are areas of the village where the houses are really crowded together but there are also areas where the houses are uh, really far away apart one from each other. So those areas are far better to photograph. So just by making a really simple analysis, you can decide what you do. Sometimes as photographers, we tend to forget this. We tend to get lost in the landscape, but it's a really good thing to think about what you need in order to achieve the results you want. Now the first shot that I'm gonna take, it's gonna be over there in the distance. I'm gonna position my tripod. I have the beautiful light of the sunset. Let me just take the photo and talk after that because I don't want to lose the light. So just bear with me. I'm uh, positioning the tripod. Let's, let's see exactly what is happening over here. So I, I'm at F11, of course, ISO 100. I'm concentrating on all sorts of shots in that direction right now and 
um, and trying to isolate houses. There are also some houses that are right on top of the of the uh, of the hill. And I think they look really really good. I'm gonna go forward just a little bit because I want to photograph above a fence. But as I'm going, I'm seeing a really really small house that's on top of the hill, and it creates such a beautifully contrasted image and I'm also having the beautiful uh, light casted on the hill from the left of the house I think this is this is gonna be really really great I'm also having the beautiful light of the sunset above the house that creates in my opinion an image that is it's looking almost like a painting and sometimes when you think about minimalist shots you think about desaturated shots or maybe black and white shots usually this is the kind of editing that you see or the post processing that you see from these images but i think in some occasions in some cases where the color is really vibrant and interesting i think you should keep it and now i also have to admit something there are some elements that i really don't like in this composition so i will probably end up by cloning out those elements so Maybe some of you are against it, but it is what it is. So I'm just getting close to the camera to take you with me. I'm changing position as fast as I can because the sunset light is on the hills. I didn't hope to have sunset light, but right now I have. There's a really beautiful light on top of some birch trees. And I also have a house in the lower left of the image. This looks really good. So I'm sorry if, if, if you're to the side but this looks really interesting so I have to take it this is a very beautiful shot over here it's a lot of contrast oh let me just fix your position so there's a lot of contrast in this image nah, but it, it's really it's really beautiful how the light shines behind them the house I'm having the house and then a ridge of birch trees they look really great really spectacular and also, I see another beautiful shot, but I have to, to change position again. It's a house that has uh, its walls red. As you can see, I change position really fast and the light, it's really good. So I have, I have to move really fast. So just, just, from, just from one place, just from one place, there are a lot of possibilities. Oh, this is really beautiful. It's a house surrounded by some trees. And uh, yeah, it looks really, really great. Take a look at the photo and you kind of judge for yourself. There is there's a group of trees, then there is a house. And that, after that, you see the larger group of trees. So it's perfect in terms of uh, composition. And to my right, so I have a house. Let me just quickly show it to you so I have um, a house and I also have the top of the hill and some um, some poles the electric uh, the electric poles and it, it looks really great the contrast is really big the clouds are dramatic so these are the kind of things that I'm looking for sorry if I talk really fast and I'm photographing really fast but I really need to do that if I want to take all the shots. So uh, I'm only 15 minutes from sun sunset, so I have, to, I have to move really quickly. So probably you'll excuse the lack of B-roll in this situation and you'll continue to look because there are lots of information. Right now I shot at ISO 100, 15th of a second and F11. And even though I'm shooting and the elements are so far away, I'm still using an aperture that small of f11 sometimes people say that oh you can shoot at f4 because from that distance everything is the same plane yes but it's the photo is not uh, that sharp if you're using an f4 or 5.6 or 6.3 f11 on this lens produces the the best results so let's let's quickly analyze yeah another thing that i'm seeing right now is um, a birch tree and there is light on the top of the birch tree and I think I can, I can, uh, I can get something really, really beautiful. I'm switching the um, camera back to full frame mode, just to have 
a wider image to have the top of the birch tree and have above it this, uh, the dramatic sky. Again, my son, it's, it's over there and I'm shooting in that direction. So I, I really like having subjects in the sunset light, not necessarily photographing into the light. There are occasions when this works, but right now it doesn't. The contrast is too big. The last shot of this vlog, it's, it's this house. And as you can see, it, I'm gonna go further just to see it. I'm gonna frame it at the bottom of the frame, not that much. Right now you see a lot of, a lot of foreground element, but I'm gonna frame only a small portion, portion and I'm, then I'm gonna have the sky above. And I, I think it's gonna look really good. We have some dramatic sky and I will also do a long exposure for this and see the results. The shot with no ND filter, it's f11 0.5 seconds and ISO 100. And let's calculate quickly the exposure time. Four minutes and 16 seconds, which is not, is not that much. Four minutes and 16 seconds. So let's put the filter. I'll switch to bold mode. Set an exposure time of four minutes and uh, 16 seconds and just take the shot. And now I really hope that the four minutes are more than enough to capture a little bit of the movement in the clouds. So well, this was it for today. I hope you like it. I hope you found it useful. Leave a comment if you have something to say or have a question. You can also subscribe to this YouTube channel if you want to see more similar videos. If you are already subscribed, thanks for being a subscriber and thanks for your time spent on this uh, video. Bye-bye.